What's up, YouTube? Welcome in to part 44, the Lewis Hamilton episode of Horizon Forbidden West. With a therapist, it's a very long playthrough, so the fact that you are here is awesome, and I am so grateful for your support. Please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, all that fun stuff. Subscribe to the channel, check out my other playthroughs, and let's enjoy what today has to offer for us. Search the site for shipwrecks. Can do. Oh. Those ancient ships have got to be on here somewhere. There. A sunken ship. Maybe it has what Harriam and Christia need to fix the gyro compass. Sure is. The ship's antenna. Let's hope the sensor unit is still intact. I would be amazed if it is. Mm, no sensor unit. But there is an old recording. This is the USS Anchorage, hailing anyone who's left. The Medina, the Omaha, and the New Orleans are down, and the swarm just cracked the Harris open like an egg. Focus should pick them up. Another battery. I just need one more of these. Go away, dude. These batteries are apparently non corrodible. God damn, dude. I should be able to, like, spear them under the water or something. Focus picked up coordinates from that transmission I found. If there's more shipwrecks there, one might have an intact sensor. Here's hoping. Oh, Sunwing. Where you at, buddy boy? I think that Sunwing I overload is still around. Be a faster way to get to those coordinates I found. Come here. Come here, birdie. Thank you. All the way up here, huh? Or we just do this. Well, that ship has an antenna with a dreadwing perched on it. Great. Gonna have to deal with it before I can look for the sensor the Quen need. Oh, God. Oh.
Okay, I should be able to check out that antenna now. Am I gonna need my bird? Sensor unit. This should be all that Harry and Christian need. Lucky so me. One more transmission in here. This is the Hamilton. Anchorage, your transmission has been received. Targeting the lead Horus. Just lost the starboard missile battery. Can't fire. We're empty. Damn it. Captain, there's nothing left to fire. Your orders. Set a course for the Horus chassis. Ramming speed. Ending, is it? Nope. Considering literally everybody died, Aloy. There's never gonna be a happy ending. I do wish you could fly a Stormbird at some point. You that would find be a spot sweet. to land. Back, I found what you need. I'll get working on the gyro compass immediately. I'm coming home, Meandra. <sighs> You've done us a great kindness, Aloy. Christia is not the only one with people waiting back home. She'll be able to fix that gyro compass in no time. We'll never be able to thank you enough. But this should be a start. Hell yeah. If you need anything, tell Bohai to contact Alva. I'm sure she can help. May the ancestors steer us true. Well, you might want to rethink that phrase. It's... We did. I can't believe we're actually going home. <laughs> First, we need to put this thing together. Uh, right. <laughs> yes, put that thing together. All right, side quests are donezo. Rebel camps. Oh, right. We got to talk to Aaron about that. Right, right, right. Knock out these sons of Prometheus. Mr. Know-it-all is here. You know, you're focused, buddy, who never smiles. I didn't know what to do with him, so I had him wait in your room. Got it. Thanks. Oh, well, all right. Hi, Silence. Well, Silence, looks like you finally found a door you could open without me. <laughs> I'm glad it's there, actually. It kept me from having to mingle with the company you keep. 
but enough prattle. I believe you owe me an explanation. Your plans for the Zenith base? I don't know you shit. I remember. It's been a while since we talked about silence. Okay? So, very important to understand the way his profile tends to work out on these moments. So we're gonna, we're gonna reiterate something so that you have it in mind as we watch Aloy and Silence talk. Silence gets aggressive when he is powerless and when he's scrambled as a way to compensate for the, I don't know, helplessness that comes with that, sense of weakness that comes with that. Silence is driven by having knowledge and influence on the world that he doesn't get to always have access to because he's really not that special. And so it drives him crazy, I think, to see that Aloy has all these capabilities and doesn't seem to be particularly interested in using them in the same way that he is. So when he starts getting into this whole, like, you know, I'm entitled to an explanation and blah, 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 blah. All of that is because he is actively experiencing some sense of incompetence and some sense that he's stuck. And he tries to control situations through that aggression and ruffling or like kind of puffing his feathers out. You can see right through that if you're Aloy. Like, you don't have any power here, dude. I don't owe you anything. Like, she could literally look at him and say, I don't owe you shit, dude. You aren't even part of this. Like, literally, you're irrelevant in the grand scheme of how these things work. Uh, the only relevant thing that you have is how to disarm the shields of the Far Zenith. And it's in your best interest to do that, too, because you want to survive this world long enough to be able to understand it. So, cut the shit, dude. You need me. And Aloy really needs to access that. She needs to remember her importance in all of this because Silence is actively going to try to cut that down so he can exert influence on her. But the reason he's trying to exert influence on her, the reason he even attempts to engage with her is not because he cares about her, it's because he needs her. And he hates that. You're right. I do owe you. My spear in your throat for deceiving me again at the Hades Proofing Lab. I doubt you asked me here for that kind of reckoning. Correct. No. Right now, I need your help. So I'm giving you one final chance. But if you ever betray me again, I will kill you no matter what the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And silence doesn't care about that. I, that's an idle threat too. Like this is the this is the problem with the two of them. This is honestly what annoys me about the two of them. Is they both in some ways have this sense that they need each other. I think silence needs Aloy more than Aloy needs silence. They need each other. And instead of recognizing that there is a symbiotic relationship available to them here. They just get in a pissing match all the time and they're like threatened by that and they're annoyed by that. Like you essentially have two people that believe the same thing about who they are relative to the world, which is that they should be able to do this stuff on their own. Like Aloy has this sense, I'm, this, I'm the one who's, the, I'm the chosen one, I'm the one that's got to save the world, that's me, 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 me. Silence wants to do everything on his own and they both hate the fact that they have to help, that they have to get the help of other people. Silence is in the same position as Aloy. I mean, he was he was working with Regalo. He was working with the Tanakh. It's not like a, like Silence is working completely as a lone wolf in the same way that Aloy is not working as a lone wolf. And so I think they see a lot of each other in each other, which is what creates this conflict because they they need each other and they keep acting like they don't. And then when they say that they do, they use it to try to gain leverage, but you don't actually have leverage because as soon as Aloy says, I need you because you can disarm those shields, then Silence is going to say, well, I need you for X thing. And like, they just, it's just this over and over and over again. 
instead of like, all right, legitimately, we both can offer stuff to each other. We obviously don't particularly like each other. It's likely because we have some similarities here. Let's figure out how to make this shit work. I don't have to trust you. You don't have to trust me. But let's find what it's going to take for us to work together on this. And I really think that that would be a lot better than this pissing match they do. Because they're both just... They just posture with each other constantly, even though they're essentially the same person. Understood. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Though we'll both face a decidedly short future if you can't get us inside that base. Aloy, your other guest is here. She's, um, coming to you. Thanks. Good timing. The truth is, I can't actually get us into the base. But... She can. Oh, he's threatened. The company you keep is even worse than I thought. Not a fan of surprises, are you? Oh, look. That must be your little invention. Does the weapon work? Without self-destructing? Of course it does. I've eliminated the imperfections and greatly improved its design and output. How can we be sure? Care for a demonstration. Enough, both of you. <laughs> We're in this together, at least for now. Every single person in this room wants control. Every single one of them. And they are like, <sighs> this is where people's unwillingness to attend to their anxiety and fear and think that they're supposed to appear to be confident all the time gets them in trouble. Like if everybody here could just acknowledge that all of this is scary and there are so many unknowns and we have a lot of an uphill battle that we still have to fight and this just sucks all around and we're the three people that are capable of fixing this it would just disarm this whole thing but everybody is so steeped in their assumptions and their uncertainties and their anxiety and it's just like there's this sense of urgency that they have to do something and again every all three people in this room have so much in common they are all outcast in some way. They are all anomalies in the group that they come from. All three of them learned that they have to be self-sufficient in order to meet their survival needs. I guarantee you all three of these people are dismissively attached. So what you see is in times of adversity and like pain and anxiety, they all try to go, they essentially like try to go full, I need control mode in order to make this anxiety go away. Well, you can't have three people with this much power going into that mode simultaneously or else you get this shit. Which is why you need the collective acknowledgement of what we're actually dealing with here. And this is going to make all of us want to pull each other apart unless we figure out how to work together on this, given that we do have some common ground to stand on. Like, it's not always going to be hunky-dory. It's not like they're going to become three best friends that anyone could have. But it's certainly better off than everybody trying to posture themselves here and act like they know better and have more control. None of them has all the control here. They are literally in a situation where the three of them have to work together and they all hate it because it forces their hand instead of allowing it to be their idea. Go talk to Erend. Tell him I said to give you rooms of your own. I'll come see you when I get a chance. Oh, no, you first. <laughs> God. Oh, lordy lord. I just wanted to talk to Aaron. Really. Well, everyone in the control room so Tilda can tell us what she knows about the Zenith base. When it looks impossible, look deeper. And then fight like you can win. I will, Rost. Now? And always.
With Regala out of the way, Hikaru and Tanakh, they're safe. The future's up to them now. Well... I do wish they'd drop all the honorary names they've given me. But if I've learned anything about them, that is not a battle I am going to win. Yeah, they're all experiencing a profound sense of urgency right now, so it's oh, just it's a pressure cooker, yeah. man. I wanted those plants. Oh? I just know they meant a lot to you, and uh, I, well. Thank you, Aaron. What a guy. What's up, Katalo? I see you've got your new arm ready to go. Yes. It still feels strange. I've gotten used to the absence, but no matter. I'm sure I will need it before the attack on the Zenith base is through. Chocolate frosting. Sounds like a ration every soldier should have. Yeah, absolutely. Haven't seen you since the battle at the Grove. How are you holding up? I saw you fly on the wings of the Ten and paralyze Regala's army with lightning. I would say that I am <sighs> inspired. Thank you, I guess. It is I who should be thanking you. Your people keep mentioning the Wings of the Ten. What exactly does it mean? The visions tell us that the Ten flew on great metal machines with wings and leapt into battle from the sky. For us, to imitate this feat is the ultimate expression of martial prowess. It is why the challengers leap into the arena oh. the And now, you have done it. That's cool. <laughs> like the deeds of the Ten themselves. It will never be forgotten. So, tell me, how did it feel? I won't lie, pretty good. I can only imagine. Uh, you can you can ride it one time. I, I'll pull I'll pull the birdie up and throw you on the back if you want to try it. Did you meet Tilda? There is something about her that doesn't seem natural. I wouldn't be surprised if my sword went through her and, and she didn't bleed at all. Honestly, with her, nothing would surprise me. Things will get ugly once the Zenus realize we're in their base. You'll need every trick you've ever learned. I would have it no other way. Many soldiers died in the old world to make sure we stood here today. We will endure on their behalf. Though. I am curious how you intend to defeat the Zenith's defenses without an army of our own. Leave that to me. Just make sure you're ready to fight. As you say. You have more than earned my trust. Um. Ooh. She's in a bit of a weird spot with that. I don't particularly like that Aloy is going the route of just trust me because I do prefer that people have as much information as they can possibly have about the things that they're going to engage in. But Aloy has a loose idea of what she's going to do, but she doesn't have an airtight plan. So she has to make a decision here. Do I... You have three decisions. Do I tell people that I really am not entirely sure how we're going to do it, which is the truth, which injects a lot of anxiety into the system because the person who we have tasked with being in charge of these decisions is telling us 
that she's not entirely sure, that she has a loose plan for what we're going to do. We have a conceptual model of it, but we don't know whether it's actually going to execute properly. So now everybody's going to sit on the like unknowns of it, of like how are the, what are all the ways that this could go wrong and they potentially fill in the gaps with that stuff. So that's option one. Option two is for her to do what she did, which is to say, well, I've got it figured out. Leave that to me. Just trust that uh, we'll get it figured out, which is leveraging a lot of goodwill and trust from the people around her because that's a way to leave it up to that person to determine if Aloy said that because she knows exactly what she's going to do and she's confident about it, in which case your anxiety goes down. Or if she says that because she doesn't actually know what the full plan is or whether it's going to be fully executed and she said that to prevent me from having to experience the anxiety of that being the answer. So by giving that answer, she shuffles the interpretation to the person that she's with, hoping that there's enough trust there that that person will go with explanation number one. Uh, the third option would be to give him all the details of the plan as it is constructed so far. And that could be overwhelming. That could invite him to poke holes in it, etc. But it also is the route that gives him the most information. And saying here's here's what we think we're going to do here's the plan as we see it here's your role in it etc now i realize there may be like video game reasons why aloy didn't do that but if he's if he's wanting to know what that plan is and is consenting to going in there and taking the fight to the far zenith at some point it would be very good for us to give him an idea of what the plan is like everybody's going to need to know it because the idea of like we're just going to follow me blindly and trust what I have to say starts to fall apart very quickly because then when people have to improvise they're not improvising within a nice structured framework they're just improvising based on their own induction and we don't really want that I mean, it's a decently structured plan, but it's not one that we know is going to work for sure. And there are there are kinks in it. So, you know, Silence Machine has to work. Beta stuff has to work. We have to get in there. We have to hope like there's a lot of things that we have to hope are going to work. We don't have the schematics for the base necessarily. Like we there's there we got a lot of shit. We still got to get worked out here. Do you think avoiding giving him information is robbing him of agency? To an extent, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I think Katalo is going to follow us in no matter what. Like, I'm not really questioning his loyalty on this, but I do think that Katalo, by virtue of being somebody, has shown like has shown that he's in this and has all of his reasons for standing strong and wanting to follow us into the dark. I do think he's entitled to more information. He doesn't. He has not struck me as a person who gets overly wrapped up in his anxiety when there are unknowns on the table. He benefits from knowing what the plan is, having a, like something to execute. He seems to be very comfortable with the idea that there may need to be some improvisation and then not everything is going to be cut and dry. So to me, Katalo's a person where you give him some of the plan. You tell him what the plan is, what his role is, what some of the things that still need to be worked out are. You keep him in the loop. Especially since he's going to be on the front lines of this thing. I have to go. But I'll be briefing everyone on the plan And soon. there's that, too. Understood. Right, like, I, and some, I could just see there's going to be a comment. Somebody be like, you spoke too soon, Dr. Mix. She's going to just do it in the conference room and tell everybody. And like, yes, that's true. And also, he just asked her directly. And I still think that it would be worth her while to give him maybe some of the specifics. It would take her, like, two minutes. Or ask him, like, what, what kind of specifics would you like to know about the plan? Or share with him, like, you know, hey, I'm going to share this plan with everybody in the meeting. Here's some additional stuff that you should know. Hey, Aaron. Yeah? I was thinking we could spar for a bit. When you have the time. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, of course. 
It might be a way to deal with my anger. Hmm. Yeah, beating the crap out of me makes you feel better. I'm all for it. Ooh, she's mad. Which is a great time for me to step in and again. One more time. Plug. Go watch my grief video. Go watch it. Go watch it. It's here on YouTube. Go watch the grief video. Uh, but I am going to say, if you if you heard her say anger and you go, oh good, she's working through the stages of grief. Stages of grief is bullshit. There's no linear way to go through grief. You don't have to experience every single one of the emotions laid out in the stages of grief. She's mad. That's all it is. She's mad. We're not going to think about all the other possibilities that come along with that. She has said, I'm angry. I'd love to spar. It would help me work through it. That's great. She's not going through this stage. This is then going to lead to this stage. This is then going to lead to this stage. And the reason that I'm making a point of talking about this is because a lot of people believe that they are supposed to grieve in a certain way, that you are supposed to go through all the stages and believe that if they don't experience like sadness, for example, that they're grieving wrong. And that's really not how this works. So I just wanted to make sure I intercepted that for if you're hearing Zoe say that. Like, she's just mad. That's cool. They've had a pattern of going back and forth on missions without telling each other what the specific plan was. Like when he didn't tell Aloy how he would test the arm until they got there. Do you think there's something meaningful in that dynamic and how she's being vague here? I, the just the best that I could offer on that is just that there's uh, space th that's a reflection of their trust in each other, which is fine. But uh, trust only takes you so far. Aloy. It appears that we have some interesting new guests. I'm glad to see you're okay, though. I heard you gave the Tanakh something to talk about. I gave I was half something. expecting you to burst in through the ceiling riding a sunwing. Sorry to disappoint. I gave him a little mystery to figure out. Thoughts on our new Zenith acquaintance? I'd say she smells like death, but even death smells of something. She's more like a cold piece of metal. Bent on repelling all semblance of life. She's definitely different. Ready to head over to the Zenith base? Whatever comes, we will endure. Have you talked to any of our new friends? Erend and I tried speaking to Silence, but apparently our tribal prattle is unnecessary. <laughs> Charming, isn't he? I have to go. I trust you to keep things civil around here? I'll make sure Aaron doesn't punch Silence in the face, if that's what you mean. Thanks. Aloy! You came back with some interesting... friends. I wish I could say we don't need them. But Silence and Tilda are here for a reason. Yeah. Enemy of my enemy and all that, right? Right. I guess Silence is keeping to himself, as usual. I was hoping he'd give me an excuse to hammer his sorry ass to the ground. Please don't. You telling me you wouldn't want to get just one good hit on that smug face of his? After everything he's done? Sure. Later. Right now, he's got something we need. Doesn't look like any of our guests are making trouble. Yet. So, Catalo tells me you flew. Well, that's new. I've been busting my bolts trying to learn to read. You're, you're out there having all the fun. Don't worry. They'll be getting all the fun you can handle soon. With the Zeniths. Looking forward to it. You, uh, talked to Tilda at all? I tried. I don't think even a hot forge could melt that ice. <laughs> and you say she wants to help? I think so. Well, let's hope. To be fair to Tilda, it would be hard to 
assimilate into this group. And like you, you've spent a thousand years being with the people of the far zenith, you came from the before times. So the idea that she could just waltz in and integrate beautifully with all the people in this base is a ridiculous expectation. Like she, she would need some time to warm up at this point. And I wouldn't be surprised if there is some part of her that is biased toward the tribal nature of the people that are currently here on the earth. Like, she, I mean, she comes from a, a time and a place where you, she sat in an ivory tower and looked down at people. I, I, there's, I have no doubt about that. She had all the amazing accoutrements that come along with being a billionaire. You get real out of touch with the masses very quickly when that's the case for you. So now she's got to walk amongst the plebes. She's not, she's going to struggle. Uh, she might come around, but like I, I do, it's a bit unfair of everybody to think that she's just going to be fine and warm and lovey dovey. She comes from an entirely different culture, has been around for a long time. And probably knows that everybody in here is going to look at her with a side eye. So I do... I do understand it. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Tilda, but I do think that, like, it, we got to be fair to her here. Silence? He's a little different. He, we got history with Silence. But Tilda? You know, I think Tilda deserves a bit of the same energy that people were bringing to Beta. I think it's maybe a little harder for them to do that because they see her as older and thus probably more capable of assimilating into the group, but... I found out more about the Sons of Prometheus. They definitely have a base. It's a place called First Forge. We just have to find it. First Forge? All right, that's it then. I know where that is. You found one of them? A Sons of Prometheus operative? Hey, he was posing as a Delver, but my focus locked onto his. When he saw me coming, he ran. I caught up with him. He tried to crush his focus, but there was still data on it. A bunch of locations and coordinates. One of them was called First Forge. I didn't know what it meant till now. Hey! Nice job. Ah, you know me. Ancient tech expert. You are now, Send bud. Send those coordinates, okay? Now hold on, Aloy. I'm coming with you. Mm -hmm. Asera is the last of a line of killers that murdered Ursa. And I need to be there when she goes down. Of course. Send me the location and I'll call you when I'm close. All right, then. Absolutely. He certainly deserves that. I better get going. Oh, you know where to find me. There you are. Knowing that she's also the voice actress for Arya Talok, I just, you know, I'm very, I have this very dissonant experience because Arya Talok is. Tilda is with the same voice, you know, it just sort of like I trust transcends them right. and yeah, it just gets your boy all kind of messed up in the head. Well done, Aloy. Despite my reservations, you managed to secure silence and his weapon. You're truly a shining example of Liz's fortitude. Does that sound a bit condescending to you? That sounds a bit condescending to me. I've been thinking about what you said at your house. How you were friends with Elizabeth. It was more than that, wasn't it? Perceptive as ever. You're right, we were together for a time. Okay, so... What happened? Oh, give me the, give me the gossip, baby. Yes, this is what I live for. I love shit like this. Oh, man, I don't want to be entertained at other people's expense, but oh, baby, this is the kind of stuff that, like, in real life, man, I get jazzed up at this kind of shit. Oh, baby, give me, mm, get, mm, bring it on. Mm, 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 mm. Ready to munch on this coffee, cake, and tea, baby. Let's go. I was an orphan. I had always been alone. 
by my 30s, I was starting to wonder if that was simply my fate in life. And then I met Liz. We kept running into each other at conferences. We'd have coffee. At some point, it became drinks. I thought it was just shop talk, an exchange of ideas, but then I was surprised at how much I looked forward to seeing her. Soon we were flying halfway across the world every other week just to meet up. For the first time, I didn't feel lonely. I could imagine a future where I wasn't. I think Liz felt the same way at first. She had lost her mother a few years back. I filled a void for her. I know I did. But as time passed, it seemed as though she wanted less when I wanted more. And so we ended things. So helping me, restoring Elizabeth's dream, it's what? A, a second chance, yes. I made a mistake leaving Earth while Liz stayed behind. I should have done more. So when I saw you, a woman who has carved her own remarkable path beyond even what made Liz a phenomenon. I got horny. I had to oh. help you. To do right by her. Wow, 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 wow. Why do you think Elizabeth pulled away? I've wondered that for a thousand years. She was brilliant, visionary. She cared so deeply for the world, for the betterment of humanity. But it also felt like she kept everyone at arm's length, including me. She never wanted to share her burdens. I think in the end, she had a core that she never let anyone be part of. Sometimes I wonder if anyone really knew her. Oh, so, so, oh boy. Um, my first thought was the same as yours, Skog, which is that makes her interactions with Beta a little weird. Um, I mean, I get it. It would be really hard. Like, imagine that. Like, imagine that. You're in, a, you're in an intimate relationship with somebody that you idealize pretty heavily. It never quite feels like you can reach that person as deeply as you'd like to reach them. And then you find out that there are two clones of that person. That person that you originally wanted to access is no longer available to you at all. But now you have clones of that person available to you. So Beta getting to come hang out at her house and stuff you know, yes, she probably wanted to take care of Beta, make sure that she was okay. I, I believe that stuff. But I also very much believe that there was definitely a self-serving part of that, which was essentially that she maybe got a chance to get to know the parts of Elizabeth that she didn't get to know because Elizabeth didn't let her. Which feels gross because in a lot of ways, it's like Elizabeth didn't consent to that. Like Elizabeth would have told you all that stuff if she wanted you to know it. You would have you would have got to know it if she was going to let you in. And so for whatever reason she didn't let you in, that's not information that you're entitled to. Nobody's entitled to that information. So trying to get it by facilitating that relationship with Beta potentially, ew. Uh, with Aloy, it's a little bit different, I think, because Aloy is further along developmentally, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tilda's willingness to be vulnerable with Aloy is potentially to see if she can get there with, not with Aloy like in a relationship, but to get that piece that she's looking for. What happens when I try to facilitate intimacy, albeit in a very awkward way, can I get somebody who's more accessible to me than Elizabeth was? The answer with Aloy is going to probably be a resounding no. Uh, so it just feels weird. Like, I, I, I... The 
when when you want more from somebody and they're not willing to give it, you're not entitled to it. The thing that you have to do is make a decision about what you want to do with the lack of information that you're getting from that person. Like if you're in an intimate relationship with somebody and there are things that you want to know about them and they withhold that information or for whatever reason, and you believe that this is information that would be helpful for you to determine whether you want to be in that relationship and they simply won't give it to you, then you decide whether you want to continue that relationship. You don't try to force that person to give you that information. So it just feels kind of, you know, there's a really heavy idealization of Elizabeth. And, and I think it, I might be seeing a pattern where there is no pattern, but it has a very similar vibe to the way that like, again, that Silence and Aloy engage, which is, they, how do I want to put this? Got distracted by my cat. They want control. They want, they believe that they're entitled to all of the information. And when they don't have it, they get weird. <laughs> and uh, they need Elizabeth for the things that they want to do. And they are willing to use her. And in Tilda's case, she's like using her and expecting that there's going to be like... Uh, it's just... Uh, I don't know. It feels weird. It's hard to describe because it's the kind of situation that like real life doesn't have a parallel to. Like, it's not like people are walking around with clones. But... You do have very strong opinions on this, don't you, buddy? Yeah, this is this is a. You see Aloy with the red hair, and you're like, I got something to say about red hair. Yes, I got something to say about red hair. Scratch my ear. Yes, you're making it hard for me to keep my thoughts coherent, buddy. Mm. That's fine. Give you a little bit of love for a second. I'll say hi to chat. I'll say how much I appreciate YouTube for being here and Twitch for being here live. Watching me scratch my kitty when I should be playing Horizon. Yes. 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 I love you, so I'm willing to do that. Yeah. Okay. Are you good? Or are you going to walk around back and forth like you always do and meow at everything and rub your head on the microphone the whole time? Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Is that what you're going to do? Okay. <laughs> I found a recording of you and Elizabeth back in the proving lab after Farzinet's attempt to steal Gaia. Yes. A most unpleasant conversation. She said something after the call. I think she regretted how things ended between you. Did she? All this time, thank you for telling me. I've always hated that those were the last words we ever said to each other. And that her last impression of me was as a functionary of Far Zenith, not who I truly am. Which is? Ah, you don't get to do that. Making, oh, how do I want to say this? You are a functionary of Far Zenith. You are. Like, 
it's fine that you don't see that as the entirety of who you are, but you also don't get to divorce that from yourself. Like, you don't get to go on the Odyssey and be part of Far Zenith and then say to everybody, but that's, it's, you know, you can't, you can't, that's not fair. You, that's not fair. You, everybody sees me as being, you know, a, a billionaire on Far Zenith. Nobody ever sees the real me. Like, yes, there is more to you than that, but that is a piece of you. That it, Like, the things that you choose to do, the people you choose to engage with, the places you go, these are all things that are a reflection of how people are going to conceptualize your presence in the world. And so if that's something that was particularly salient to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth had whatever kind of objections she may have had to Far Zenith or whatnot or was grieving the loss of Tilda in whatever way she was going to grieve and you know, whatever, you don't get to decide that people should divorce that from you because that's not who you are. Like, that's fine, but, you, like, yes, there's more to you and people can try to get to know it, but if people are going to look at, like, look at you right now. You're, you're dressed like the Far Zenith. You got your shield up. You've been alive for a thousand years. You went on the journey. You didn't have to go. You chose to go. And if that's what Elizabeth saw and was frustrated about the fact that you left, she's entitled to that. You don't get to do that. Other people get to have autonomy to form, to draw conclusions about you based on what they see and how you interact with them. You said before that you're not like the other Zeniths, that you never were. But you went along with all of their plans. Out of necessity. I'm not proud of it. But complicity became a means of survival, both when Earth was consumed and when the colony on Sirius was destroyed. I did what I had to. But I resolved to remain one step ahead of the others to try to undo what damage I could. Hence the data channel with Beta. The secret passage into their base and the little trick I pulled to save you. Which is cool and I appreciate that, but man, she's got some demons. She's been sitting with some demons for a thousand years. Which sucks. I don't envy that. I, I wouldn't want to be in her position. I wouldn't have to lament all of this shit for thousands of years after all of the Earth dies. That all, that sucks, man. But and I and I do believe her. I'm sure that there was part of this where she did have to be complicit with stuff she didn't want to be complicit with in order to survive. And she still she chose survival. You know, remember back in Pharaoh's Bunker, what I said about the doctor. I know it's morbid, but death is a choice. If she said that, like, this is just so horrifically terrible, and I don't want to be complicit in this, and I don't want to, uh, then choose not to be immortal. Live out your natural life and die. I, I, it's, I, I'm, I'm being a bit black and white about this, but... You know, at some point, like, yes, you did have to be complicit in order to survive. I don't envy that. I, I hate that that was the case for you. And also, you did make decisions along the way. And you are associated with these people. You chose to get on the ship. Unless you tell me that somebody held a gun to your head when, you were, when it was time to go on the Odyssey and said, Nope, you, Tilda, are chosen to go on the Odyssey, so you're going to do it. I don't, I don't feel bad for her. Well, well, like I feel bad for her in some ways, but I don't feel bad for her right now as Aloy telling me like her sob story while I'm dealing with a bunch of shit. Like I can appreciate where you come from, but you had an immense amount of privilege with the decisions that you made. And the fact that you're even standing here right now makes it hard for me to feel bad for you. Why did you make the data channel look like your house? I built that house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place, not just for me, but for the art stored in its depths. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. 
Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. Didn't we already talk I'm about sorry, this? sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. Well, that's weird. Okay. It's like, a, it's like they just kind of recycled the dialogue there. When it's time to break into the Zenith base, what can we expect? I'll go over the full layout once you've assembled your friends. Suffice it to say, we will need to push as fast as possible to Beta and Gaia's location, dealing with heavy resistance along the way. There are also printing facilities where the others have been amassing the natural resources they've stripped from the region. What for? First for use in the base's infrastructure, and then to fabricate more Spectre drones, a small army of them. When I was out in the wilds, I saw a shuttle take off from the island, heading for space. It was likely ferrying materials to and from our ship in orbit. After hundreds of years luxuriating in our digital comforts, the ship was barely space worthy when we made our escape. Disaster can strike at any moment. We've learned our lesson. So, Eric, was he always a bloodthirsty psychopath? I believe he got worse over time. On Earth, he was the founder of a profitable private military company. A band of cutthroats, in other words. Even as governments abandoned human combatants in favor of automated warfare. He found success with clientele that required a more personal touch. There were also rumors that he personally hunted and killed his targets. On occasion, all for the thrill of it. But on Sirius, he retreated to virtual reality simulations. In them, he could go on rampages as violent as he pleased, though I suspect with diminishing satisfaction. Okay, Nil. All of his tribe believes he was one of the greatest people from the old world. Then they would be quite disappointed to meet him, though I'm sure he'd bask in the adoration. What can you tell me about Gerard? He was the head of the world's largest financial conglomerate, and as such had dealings with almost every major corporation. It made him one of the wealthiest people on Earth, and certainly the wealthiest among Farzeneth. What does one person do with that much money? Buy more, more power, more influence. Gerard's always believed himself to be a refined patrician able to maintain control with a polished smile. But beneath that exterior is a cold and calculating operator. It was his decision to restrict Beta's upbringing to her digital educators, the avatars of the Apollo database, while we were painted as her benefactors. Well, we'll deal with him soon enough, and the others. I would very much like to see his face when he realizes we've beaten him. When I was in the ruins of Vegas, I found data on a man named Stanley Chen. I think he was a Zenith. Stanley, ever the optimist. He was one of the good ones. When we established our colony, he built an exact replica of Las Vegas in virtual reality. boy. Lights, shows, gambling. Every detail perfectly recreated. And while others cloistered themselves in their own fantasies, he flung his doors wide to everyone. The way you're talking about him, I'm guessing he didn't make it back to Earth? No, he perished when our colony was destroyed. He would have been thrilled to discover that part of his beloved city survived. When Beta escaped and hid in an ancient research facility, I saw another one of the Zeniths, Verbena. Who was she? A dull star amidst a sea of brighter constellations. Unlike most of Far Zenith's members who amassed their wealth through shrewd business deals and technological achievements, Verbena inherited her billions. Ugh, ugh, her gross. 
She didn't do shit for that money. Gross. Can't have that new money. Other had achieved great success in the luxury holotourism industry. <laughs> At age 24, she became the world's most eligible bachelorette, branding herself a life designer. Someone who leverages their fame to influence the choice of others. What? Like a cult? In a way, yes. Well, she must have done something right to have survived this long. She was her own brand of Ruthless. That much is true. Of course she was. But even rats can cling to a vessel for escape. Wow. Well, just remember, all of this says more about Tilda than it does the people she's describing. It, like, notice... That even though the other Far Zeniths may have built themselves up from nothing, they amassed their fortunes with hard work, but inevitably did not very savory things. And she talks with about them with a degree of admiration because she there's this tendency to believe that people who are rich must have worked hard for it. And in some ways, that's true. And in other ways, it's all about opportunity. Her disgust at the fact that somebody would inherit their fortune rather than having had to work very hard for it tells us something about the way in which she values people's personal investment and how they amass their, their resources. So if she perceives that somebody's just got stuff handed to them, she's likely not to look very favorably upon them. Whereas somebody like Aloy, whose history she's seen, where Aloy has overcome many obstacles in order to be where she is today, albeit some of it probably attributed to Elizabeth, there is a degree of admiration there. The reason that I think that's important is because if you read between the lines on that, as we are doing, what it would tell you is that her admiration for Aloy, I think, is authentic which means that we have a degree of buy-in from Tilda and a bit, an ability to influence her in a particular way because of that admiration. We're seeing a consistent pattern in the way that she like holds others in her mind's eye based on that factor. Remember, when people describe other people, spend less time thinking about the people they're describing and spend more time thinking about what's going on for them while they're describing them. You learn so much about people through how they describe and react to others. Okay, so I've had run-ins with a handful of Zeniths. What about the rest? An array of the wealthiest people on Earth. Titans of their industries. And let me guess, all selfish and ruthless to the core? Most, but not all. They were- The higher up you move the corporate structure, uh, the closer you get to like sociopathic tendencies, that's not to say that C-level executives are all sociopaths, but you have to, you got to have a little bit of that in you in order to get that high. Empathy really doesn't have a lot of place in being a bastion of corporate America. There are a few with whom I got along. Annika Merjani, for instance, was always delightful. She founded the Holonet's most successful dance channel and was herself mesmerizing to watch. And I had fascinating discussions with Song Jiao about her work in cellular biology. Our immortality treatments are due in part to her achievements. But then there were others like Devin Miller, the CEO of a fast food printing corporation. His only real preoccupations were perfecting his golf swing and taking self hollows. When I think about all of us, we really should have accomplished more. We had eternity. Have you figured out how Silence's weapon works? No, and he's been very careful not to allow me near it. I'll admit it bothers me, but regardless of how it functions, I am confident it will deactivate the other shields en masse. How many of them are in the base? Ten, including Eric and Gerard. Only a handful of us made it to our ship when our colony collapsed. Would love to know how that went down. It is true, you would have some contempt toward people that you spent a thousand years with. Yeah, it's a lot of time. Okay, I'll let you know when it's time. I'll be here until then. And thank you, Aloy, for giving me this chance. My past has always been a struggle, 
More than once, I've lost everything. But when I look to the future, I see Liz's dream fulfilled. A universe of new possibilities. Live for yourself, man. Dude, I'm all for trying to, like, live for, like, I'm all for acknowledging Elizabeth and how important she was to you and stuff like this. But holy shit, man. Tilda has, like, lost some of herself in that. I don't know if that's because she just doesn't like who she is and what she's become and what she's dealt with or what, but man, like the amount of times that she talks about how all of this is to realize Elizabeth's dream. Like, first of all, I'm not Elizabeth. Beta's not Elizabeth. I'm not going to be as impressed by this potentially as Elizabeth is. Dead Elizabeth would have to make a determination of whether this was something that was going to make it up to her. But like... It saddens me sometimes when people get really, really, really invested in carrying out the legacy of something else besides their own convictions. Like, you can certainly have people influence the direction you want to go, and you can, you can do things where you're like, you know, I think my dad would be proud of me if I did this. Like, that's fine. But there are people that legitimately lose their sense of self in that. And it's not always just other people. I mean, it can be... It can be religious deities. It could be uh, so many different things. It could be a company. It could be a brand, whatever. Like when you, as soon as you start kind of like selling your soul for something that you believe something else wants and you start making all these decisions on behalf of that, no matter how healthy, that, that causes a lot of internal conflict. And it's just amazing to me how often Tilda's like, yeah, for, for Elizabeth. Like, what do you want? You, you, Tilda. What drives you? I think that's also part of what makes her very hard to connect with. Because we don't get a feel of her. We get a feel for what the people that she liked and, and what she likes and her aesthetic tastes. But we don't get a feel for, like, you. Like, what drives you? Who are you, separate of Elizabeth Sobek? Maybe we can make it happen. We will. I won't let anything get in the way. I promise you that. Okay. So you say. You know, we've never played Machine Strike together. Oh, no. <laughs> I got enough trouble with Catalo. Always kicking my ass. Uh, it's all going... You... you flew? Cotalo told me! And took out Regala's machines? You know what? I don't even know why I'm surprised. I saw we have visitors... and a new weapon. Does this mean we're ready to take the fight to the Zeniths? Almost. I suppose you saw that Tilda is here. Our very own Zenith. I almost went up to her... to ask her... Well, every question I've ever had about the legacy. Every diviner I know would kill to get five minutes with one of the old ones. But now that she's here, all I feel is a vague unease. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm scared of finding out more uncomfortable truths or just scared of her. Mm -hmm. Probably both. Probably both. That would be wild. That's good, though. Elva got the ick and she followed it. You sure you're okay going on this mission? I know things must be happening pretty fast for you. Uh, I've already braved oceans and madmen who thought they were ancestors reborn. Why not a few immortals with lethal drones at their command too? Guess the more the merrier. Why not? I hope our new guests have been behaving. The silence. He's the one who built the weapon that can take down Zenith shields? He is. Though I wouldn't expect him to answer any questions about it. He refuses to dole out his secrets to us lesser mortals. Oh. You know that special part of us that makes us warm, kind, welcoming? Our... spirit? <laughs> yeah. He was born without that. <laughs> wow. Well. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what a burn. I need to wrap up a few things, but stay sharp. I'll be ready when you call. Okay. Did you need something? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I did not see him in here. Oh man. <laughs> oh God. That fabrication terminal has been very useful. Oh, jeez. Bravo. You managed to sway a zenith to your side. Care to explain? Not a chance. I thought you said the weapon was ready. <laughs> There's always room to optimize, but that's not why you're here. I assume you want to comprehend my undertakings, so ask away. Since when were you so forthcoming? Since you turned this into a waiting game. And as it seems you have found modest success. Oh yeah, modest. Perhaps so modest. I'm willing to be generous. Oh, you're such a sweet pie. Such a sweet pie, Silence. Okay, so your big plan, everything you've been manipulating for the last few months. Let me see if I got this straight. You learned about the Zenith from Hades when you interrogated it. Then you came up with a plan to defeat them by using a Tanakh army and that weapon. And to get the Tanakh to fight for you, you, or rather the sons of Prometheus, armed Regala's rebels with override tech. Did you have an actual question or are you still playing <laughs> catch up? <laughs> so all this time, even before I found the coordinates at the spire, you were out here scheming. Why couldn't you just tell me? When I learned of the Zenith's return to Earth, I laid out my plans. I knew I would one day require an army of overzealous Tanakh to assault the Zenith base. The casualties would be extreme. And I knew you would never allow such a sacrifice no matter how necessary. Thus, I devised a means to remove your interference from the equation at the Hades Proving Lab. And you fail. Well, I appreciate the honesty, big dog. You wanted me to surrender to the Zenith at the Hades Proving Lab. <coughs> they almost killed me. Based on everything I knew about them, I concluded they would find you a useful asset, thereby keeping you out of harm's way and, more importantly, out of my way. So you really didn't know they had their own clone of Elizabeth? No. Unfortunately, there was no way I could have known that particular detail. Detail? Well, I guess if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be here today. Why create the Sons of Prometheus? You didn't need a Sarah to make override tech. They were a necessary safeguard. My time serving Hades in the Eclipse demonstrated the risks of getting directly involved. Through the Sons of Prometheus, I could execute my plans. All while remaining anonymous. Except to a Sarah. How did you get a Sarah to work for you? I knew there was an associate of the Oseram Tinker, Durval, who escaped his failed assault on Meridian. It was trivial to track her down and gain her cooperation. She wanted to succeed where Durval had failed. So you promised her Regala and the Tanakh. 
Sarah would help you create a machine writing army and wanted to see Meridian burn as much as she did. And so a partnership was born out of thirst for blood, bonded in mutual self interest. You think you had everything figured out, huh? I did. He did. He did. Like, that's the thing is, like, Silence isn't stupid. Like, what makes Silence scary is he's actually pretty perceptive. Like, he, he actually does understand people's motivations, what makes them tick, and what they need. It, it, it's not like he's just shooting in the dark here. I mean, how many times has he had us wrapped around his finger? In some ways without realizing it. Like, he's very good at what he does. That's what makes people like Silence terrifying. It requires an immense, like, so, I, this is very important for me to say. Or for, do, do you want to say it? Would you prefer to say it? Hmm? Oh my gosh. Guys, it's not even snack time yet. What are we doing? All right. <laughs> hey. I'm gonna give you one more chance to be on my lap. And if you don't chill, I'm gonna put you down on the floor. Okay, you're going down on the floor. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, so when Aloy was talking to Alva and she said that silence essentially doesn't possess any empathy, she could not be more wrong. In order for silence to create the relationships and the pathways that he's created, the interpersonal engagements that he's had to leverage in order to get to where he's going. He has to understand motive. He has to empathize with where people are coming from and why they do the things that they do. Because if he, if he doesn't understand those things, he's going to miss the mark every time and people are going to just think he's this like ruthless idiot. So silence absolutely possesses empathy. The difficulty is that silence uses that empathy for his own personal gain. But he has deluded himself in a lot of ways into thinking that his own personal gain is equivalent to the gains of the entire like community at large. So he's not using the empathy to connect with people and be diplomatic and uh, join forces. He uses it insofar as he can have a means to an end. Like it, it, it's empathy as utility as opposed to like empathy as connection. I think if, it, if he was truly a sociopath, he would operate in complete self-interest, devoid of any empathy, and would not really... He wouldn't have the same depth of understanding of the people that he's engaged with. So I actually think that it's kind of dangerous that Aloy conceptualizes silence as not having any empathy, because that attitude in belief is going to make her more susceptible to his ability to get under her skin and get her to do things that he wants her to do. If she can understand that he's very good at empathizing and that he weaponizes that empathy, then she can be prepared for it. Dude. I'm literally going to kick you out. I'm going to kick you out. If you keep this shit up. Tell me about the weapon. How does it work? I've upgraded the delivery system. It now emits a wave-like effect covering a significant distance. That doesn't fully answer my question. No, but I'd be a fool to reveal its inner workings. After all, why did you withhold your plan for dealing with the Zenith drones? Yes, 
Even you can appreciate the value of secrecy when warranted. Suffice it to say that the weapon will work. That's empathy, by the way. Again, just to really hammer this home. He he understands. He get he that's empathy. He gets where she's coming from on this stuff. And she's trying to he's trying to get her to realize, like, yeah, you can empathize with me. You get it. He has a very sharp knowledge of how the humans around him work. He is not stupid. The intricacies of how is knowledge that is mine alone. And I have power because of that. And that feels really good. But if I put my money where my mouth is, which is the desire to save all of the people that are currently on planet Earth, you'd share the patent. If it was that crucial. If you were, if you were as altruistic as you would like us to believe, you'd share it. But he revels in the power and control of that. And even more than that, this is how he's needed. As soon as silence gives the information for how that's constructed, we don't need him. He's disposable. So he's holding on to that secret so he can maintain power and so that he can matter. So that he can continue to tell himself that he's necessary to the survival of the planet. When in reality, it, he is not necessarily necessary. His knowledge is necessary. What he's developed might be necessary, but he silenced the person is not necessary. Which is the ultimate disconnect between him and Aloy. Because Aloy, the person, is necessary. Because she is a clone of Elizabeth Sobek. So who she is matters. Aloy transcends all the knowledge and roles that she could ever occupy. At the end of the day, that body is necessary. And that is something that Silence will never have. The only thing he has is his ability to try to stay a steps ahead of people and to develop technology and stuff that makes him relevant. I think at some point that's going to drive him crazy. I think it's why he's devoted so much of his identity into that. He wants to matter. He sees that Aloy matters, and that reminds him that he really doesn't. So everything he does is compensatory to that. Why help Regala take over? If you wanted an army, you could have just gone to Hakaro. Before Regala's rebellion, Hakaro was only concerned with battling machines and fostering friendships with Akarja. Even if I gained his ear, he would never agree to send his forces to battle a threat he couldn't understand. So helping a bloodthirsty exile was easier. Yes. Yes. Exceedingly so. Yes. Yes. It is so much easier. Of course, dude. Aloy, you gotta stop being surprised by silence doing the things that make sense. Yes, get a fanatical, bloodthirsty cult leader who you can easily manipulate with fear to go do your dirty work over a guy who is trying to inject nuance into a tribe that has traditionally lacked it. Of course he's gonna go with Regala. All Regala craved was war against the Karja and anyone who threatens the Tanakht. She would have led the tribe into battle without question, which was precisely what I needed. Yep. While I was out there, I had a couple run-ins with the Quen. The tribe from across the ocean. And? Their entire tribe was shaped around the discovery of focuses. One of them, Alva, even joined me here. Don't you want to know more about them? No. They stumbled upon the greatest technological artifact from the ancient world, and what did they do with it? They shrouded the knowledge they unearthed in mysticism and taboo, creating a pantheon out of corporate shields. Yes, well, it also led them to Thebes. Did it now? You didn't know? So those run-ins with the Quinn I mentioned. On one of them, I teamed up with their expedition to search Thebes. We found Pharaoh at the end. You must have needed Omega clearance. So, 
What was it like? Worse than you can imagine. He single-handedly wiped out collective human knowledge. I'm sure it was still less than he deserved. Let me guess. You would have scraped him into a jar so you could prod his brain. Like what you... Cool. Well, let's hope my cat doesn't get sick from drinking still water out of a bowl that was in my sink. I thought the clattering was like Allie eating cereal or yogurt or something. It was my cat in the sink because the door was closed. All right, whatever. Did with Hades. For a start. All right, Silence. I think I've talked to you long enough. I'll let you know when it's time to go. And... Try not to mess with Tilda while you're in here, okay? I don't need the two of you butting heads. Ah, uh, yes. About your Zenith ally. I wonder if you understand what kind of person you're dealing with. For someone to live as long as she has, outlast as many calamities, well, your goals may be aligned now, but I'd watch for the moment they diverge. Yeah, I'm aware. Reminds me of someone else I know. Survival is only a necessity to my greater purpose, Aloy. I'd hoped you'd recognize that by now. Do you know something or not? Oh, I know a great deal of things. But on this, you just call it... a feeling. Oh, a feeling? You mean you finally had one? Huh. Guess even you can change, Silence. It's not really an insult, but whatever. All right. My man's guts burning on something. My man Silence has the ick. Silence has the ick then. Okay. Uh, we are gonna go do uh, I'm gonna go do the thing I need to do for errand yeah first forge there we go Get out. Jesus. Let's stretch those wings. You're driving me nuts. Come sit on my lap. Just, just please. Or go up there. Thank you. Oh my goodness gracious. said we'd find Sarah's base. I should let him know I'm here. Hey, 
Hey, Erend. I'm close to Asera's base. Think you can join me? On my way. Oh, baby. So, you ready to take down some very nasty Asaram? First, we have to figure out a way in. We'll never get in unnoticed. Your armor. It's almost the same as theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, hey guys. Keep up the good work. Who are you? I'm the guy who caught the Nora as Sarah's been looking for. That suit. Who also is wearing Osir. Yeah, Mara. we don't know you. Huh. Do it more often. Come on. We just happened to find the two people who didn't know who Aloy was. <laughs> we need to find a Sarah. And That's a good plan. Down. It won't be easy to avoid her people in here. But I got my hammer ready. Just stay low for now and follow my lead. You got it. Aloy. I see you have to report. If something would happen. Hey, you mean to do that? Alarm! Just here. Oh. This is uh, Get her! Aloy, for you! Uh. Uh. They're down! This is why I came along. Doing in here. Oh, yeah, Aaron, there you go, buddy. Leviathan's breath. Uh. 
Punish her! A lot of Osram in here. Well, we weren't using those frames anyway. Oh, oh shit. Jesus, I walked right past him. Such a big guy now. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh -huh. can't beat us around for. All right. Base still not cleared. What else we got? You want a taste of this? Oh, come here. I've got Get her! Go on, Don't get me. Did you mean to do that? Yes, I meant to do that, Aaron. Yeah, I'm waiting up. for you. I think that's all. <gasps> Boom. But I don't see a Sarah. She of course you don't. Somewhere. I think I saw some doors in the back. Let's check them out. Let's -a go. We got to knock wheels with Osram doors. What was that? It sounded like a tripwire. Be careful, Aloy. Sarah really likes her booby traps. And you still like the sound of your own voice, Aaron. Sarah. I was hoping you'd make it this far now. Oh, I don't think so. There's another bridge. You have to find a way through. Aloy. Hey, oh, there's a draft here. It's got to be another path. Too bad there's no way to get to it. Yeah, hold that thought. Break that wall. Break that wall. Break that wall. This wall. I can be handy once in a while. You okay? I will be when we catch a Sarah. Keep going. You want me? Come and get it. Now what? You know she's okay. leading us into another trap. Should have thought of that. Go. Let's go. Trip wires. These look like machine pens. Need to craft something real quick, Aaron. A little something, something. She's about to be on something. Oh boy. You took your sweet time. We can't let you finish what Dervall started, Asera. This ends here. Funny. I was about to say the same thing. Get him, boys. Here we go. Get him, boys. It's not beer. Oh, look at that thing fizzing away. Ah! Boy, did you pick the wrong fight. Stop that! Oh! Finish this! 
Sun Scourge. Ooh. Ooh. Powerful mid range bow is crafted by Tanakh Rebel for one purpose Rick Destruction and the Carnage of Sundom. Oh. Wow. All right, you're on fire, Aaron. It'll pass. Oh, skin's cracking from the cold. Stand next to Aaron. It'll warm you up. I need a mop. You okay? The Red raids, my sister's death, Sarah's little army. That yeah, feels like the bloodshed never ends. And the pain it causes. I hope it's really over this time. Me too. But you did good. I'm serious. We couldn't have stopped this without you. Well, I'm glad I could help. For once, I guess. Should we head back? You go on ahead. I'd like to take a look around first. Make sure Sarah didn't leave any more surprises behind. Okay. I see you later then. By the forge, I could use a drink. That's cool. I mean, I actually think that's fine to like leave Aaron to reflect a little bit before we start talking about how's it feel. Like asking him to process how that feels in the moment like that would be, I think, a bit ridiculous. My man needs a little, a little time to gather himself. Good shit. Let's see. Now we go to... God, he's still got rebel outposts. Let's go take out that rebel outpost. Let's see what we're doing on the... Uh... 73%. Good lord. Come here, birdie. We're going here. Up, up, up. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Come on. Climb. Regala defeated, there's still outposts with rebel holdouts. I should get rid of whoever's in charge. Then I'll just send the others running. What up? Death from above. Got you now. I'm right down her. Get over there. She can dodge the crap out. Some heavy gear. They must be in charge. What the? Check if there's anything with a lock around I here. realize it's probably just kind of like a remnant of the game and like how the game works in terms of like completing it. But like this is all the more reason why like 
Like, the fact that Regala's forces remain after her death means that I, they're so, like, kind of fanatical that I just don't believe that they would have helped us. And I don't think Regala would have been able to sway them over that easily. What the? Rebels won't be bothering anyone else. A little lore. Natural Voice Scandal. New York City, March 21st, 2055. Natural Voice. The music trend that has swept the hollow net over the past year, garnering over 100 million self-professed vocals who record and distribute songs without digital or surgical altercation, is now facing its first major scandal. Songbird 5, a leading artist in the movement, confessed today to singing with a modulator implant on all 23 of her most streamed tracks. Fans and fellow vocals are devastated. I thought she was authentic, you know, lamented Dove Tears 13, whose natural voice fan sphere provides more than 3 million streams per day. But it turns out she's even more fake than some AI-driven hollow bo wood boy band. At least they don't pretend to have a real data corrupted. Always searching for authenticity as science advances. I can get it for my stash later. Tax. Just like I thought. Duco will want to see these. Okay. Rebel outpost down. I must be missing one. Maybe. That's okay. Let's assemble our companions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Justice Lee, Thundercats, ho! And you knew that I was never gonna open this door during this episode. We're gonna do it in part 45. Cause there's gonna be a lot in there. I know it. And your boys gotta go. So, thanks for taking the time to watch part 44. I appreciate it. We're getting uh, we're getting farther and farther in. We got good shit coming at us in the next episode, which will be very soon for those of you that are watching this live. Um, thanks, as always, for your support. Please leave a thumbs up and a comment. Share the stream with people. If you financially support the stream in any kind of way, thanks so much for doing that. Uh, I appreciate it very much. We do our best to get these videos out as soon as we possibly can. Support my stuff elsewhere, TikTok, all that, um, you know, TikTok, Twitch, Discord, all that fun stuff. We'd love to have you come hang out in other spaces. Um, if you're binging, I'll see you right over in part 45 in front of this door. If you're waiting for the next one to come out, I'll get it out to you as soon as we can. You're fabulous, you matter. I'll catch you on the next one.